Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's Way T. Lightheart from Bioptimizers with another edition of the Awesome Health Podcast. And today you are going to love this episode because we are going to learn how to thrive in 2021 and beyond with the magic of mushrooms and microdosing. And we've got none other than Jeremy Abramson, who is known as a high energy coach who deals with top level executives and entrepreneurs to unleash their fullest potential. He is recognized around the world for his expertise in mindful movement, mindset, mushrooms, and brain chemistry, topics that we love on this podcast. He is also the host of Thrive University Podcast, whose mission is to inspire and empower you to, with the knowledge and wisdom you never received in school, because you know what? The school of cool is not in school. So before he was making a huge impact in the health and wellness industry, he overcame nine months, or excuse me, nine months, nine nights of sleeping in Oof. his Honda CRV while only having 400 bucks to his name. He wants you to know that if he can rise from the pits of mediocrity, you can too. Jeremy, welcome to the show, brother. Wade, my man, I'm so thankful that, uh, I'm so thankful it wasn't in that Honda CRV for nine months. I don't know if I would have fully survived that. Um, but, but I appreciate you having me, man. Thanks, man. Thanks. You know, um, we were kind of chatting before this and we, we share a, a, a lot of commonalities, uh, kind of our missions in life. And of course, neurochemistry, let's maybe go backwards before we get into, you know, your thrive program and, and how medicinal mushrooms are impacting you, your work today. Where did this all start? Where are you from? How did it get going? What, what, what drove you to this kind of expression of life where you are right now? For sure. I appreciate you asking that. So for everyone watching or maybe listening, you can hear the birds chirping. So I'm actually in the backyard of my childhood home right now in San Mateo, California, which is right in the heart of Silicon Valley. Um, and, you know, grew up uh, with with a father who was a neurologist. So I think subconsciously, I always had this interest for mental health and performance, whether I noticed it or not at the time. And fast forward to senior year of high school, I was always the skinniest kid, Wade. Like in pictures, you would see my ribs. And I was like, not unhealthy skinny, but just like very fast metabolism, was always active and was really skinny. So senior year of high school was like the first time when I started going to the YMCA and I started just noticing gains and I was like, yo, like, I like this. And, uh, and I became more passionate about fitness. And when I went to University of Oregon to study business and sports marketing, I never really saw fitness or health as a legitimate career. I saw it more as a hobby. And as time went on, you know, I did a couple of powerful certifications when I moved to Miami, which is uh, when I was in that Honda CRV that you referenced. But I spent six years out in South Florida and did a couple of certifications. One of them was at Onnit Academy in Austin, um, which really impacted me and opened my eyes to the whole sphere of health, not just fitness, not just nutrition, but neuroscience. Um, biohacking, plant medicine. And it really just started this, I don't like to say addiction because I know that has a very negative stigma and connotation, but really this hunger and desire to learn and grow and apply these things to my life ultimately so I could help other people implement them into their life and make a huge impact in the world. So Hopefully that answered your question in a pretty succinct way. Love it. Uh, you know, I think when someone can find their mission in life, usually through, I would call a, a burning passion or desire that will lead you through inevitable ups and downs, challenges, turmoils, uh, the heights, I, 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 the true hero's journey which all of us are on to some level and uh the fact that you've kind of gone this route and almost kind of come full circle in relation to neurochemistry talk to us about 
your Thrive mission, how that gets, and then we'll kind of go down to the medicinal mushrooms after that, because I know our listeners are probably going, yeah, let's get into the medicinal mushrooms. But let's let's set the the tone before we go there with your mission around Thrive. What's that about, all that about? What does that mean for people? And why are so many people connecting with you as a coach around the world and resonating with your message, do you think? Yeah, great question. So I'll answer the last question first. I think a reason why people feel connected to my message is because I've really prided myself on just being authentic and expressing myself um, fully and authentically. And even when it's vulnerable, even when it might not be the popular thing to say or do, You know, I always try to share my truth in a way that I think will add value to other people's lives. Um, And I really understood the importance of that when I went to Peru in July 2018 and I had my first ayahuasca experience. Like, we can talk about that later too. And that was really the biggest moment for me in terms of recognizing, oh my gosh, I have such a powerful voice And I can really impact so many lives with that. And, you know, it's funny because I saw my dad, you know, my dad was heavily involved with Toastmasters. And I remember when I was a kid, like hearing him in the shower, like prepping his talks and like, and, and doing all this stuff. And, and, and I was like, oh my gosh, man, like I was, I was, I admired it so much. I always admired people who had that stage presence, that charisma, that ability to communicate and and really resonate with people. And it's something that I've been working on. But, you know, I think just being very authentic and also disseminating information that might be complex. It might be uh, a little a little difficult to understand, but I really do my best to communicate in a way that the average person can understand, you know, when you're talking about neuroscience, you're talking about, Hey, what is psilocybin actually doing to the brain? And you talk about some of these more complex, deep rooted topics, you can lose a lot of people. And, you know, I don't think it's always the case that the smartest person in the room has the biggest impact in the room because sometimes they're at such a level where they can't really communicate with the masses. Um, So I think that is one of the reasons uh, that my message has resonated. Um, And then thrive. So I just noticed Wade through my experience, you know, working with a lot of, at first, a lot of athletes, but after in Miami, I started working with a lot of executives, entrepreneurs, and they had all of the things, right? They had the penthouse, they had the Rolls Royce, they had the three cars, they had the three ex-wives, but I noticed a lot of them didn't really have true fulfillment Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. and they still had a lot of self-limiting beliefs. And I think a lot of people assume that, Hey, this person's reached a level of financial success or career advancement. They have it all figured out. And I realized real fast that it's not the case. You know, we all have these demons and dragons that hold us back in different capacities. So when I was really looking back at all of the work that I've done, you know, learning from people like Wim Hof, Joe Dispenza, you know, Mike Fitch with Animal Flow, a bunch of stuff with Onnit Academy in Austin, you know, all of these investments I've made, I wanted to create a program, a system that was my spin on all of these things in a way that you could easily implement them all into your life. And the program I ended up creating was called Thrive. And Thrive's an acronym and full circle to my dad. My dad always says, Wade, when you're speaking, when you're giving a talk, never use acronyms. He says NRA, like nobody remembers acronyms. Um, (laughs) That's funny. But I think a reason people might not remember acronyms is because they tell themselves like, I'm not going to remember this. It's too much to remember. So as you know, you know, your thoughts, your feelings and emotions, those are going to manifest into your actions and behaviors. So 
you know, thrive is an acronym that, that, that stands for, uh, thoughts, habits, relationships, intention, vitality, and enthusiasm. And I really believe that by mastering these six pillars, you'll create that fulfillment. You'll create that abundant life, both spiritually, emotionally, physically, and financially. So, you know, I'm happy to tap into each of those, um, whichever one you want, we can talk about all of them or, you know, maybe one or two in particular that, that you think, no, I think, I think it's a great framework for approaching life. And, you know, I, I, I also with interestingly enough, when I was a personal trainer back in Vancouver, Canada, I experienced the exact same thing that you did. And that was here all the, I, I was coaching people who nobody could get an appointment with, you know, who are listening to me, the trainer guy to kind of do. And I always said, Hey, you know, we can get you fit. That's, that's the, that's just a function of time. That's not a big deal, but getting what you think getting fit, like figuring out what you think the payoff for getting fit is, that's going to be the real journey. And they lived what I called the golden handcuffs in that they had the career, the titles, the, 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 all the, the, the possessions, the acclimates and stuff. But many of them just said, I, I'd like to leave it all. You know, I'd like to go build a boat in Indonesia. You know, <laughs> like, you know, like exactly. they wanted to escape the success they had. And I called it the golden handcuffs because the world, anybody that was around them said, well, why would you ever want to leave this? This is the thing. Yet they were, you know, living lives. I think of Pink Floyd said of quiet de uh, desperation. And I developed the formula called the awesome formula, which was one of the foundations in, in, in um, which was dealing with the biological capabilities, but I love the thrive acronym. And if you could run through each one of those real quick for our listeners, before we dive into the mushroom section of this, I know our time is limited, but I, I think this is really valuable in today's world to have a framework to approach a very confusing life because we've got so many competing priorities in the world. It's hard to, to bring back to center. What is most important to me on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, I love that. But give us yeah. a Thrive formula. Yeah, thank you, Wade. Um, so again, T is for thoughts. And I know this has become an increasingly popular thing to talk about the subconscious mind and thoughts becoming things and the law of attraction, all that stuff. Um, the way I like to think of it, though, Wade, is, you know, most science, most studies you look at show that we have 40 to 60,000 thoughts a day. That's a ton of thoughts. You know, T is for thoughts. And what I like to coach people on is just how to become more conscious and aware of those thoughts coming in. You know, you're going to have some messed up ones along the way. We all do. Even the highest performers, even LeBron, even Kobe, even Djokovic, the best athletes, the, the best performers, Elon Musk, Gary Vee, whoever you want to look at, they all have thoughts that are messed up that might not be aligned with their highest self. But what they have the ability to do is detach themselves from their thoughts, right? And I think that's such a big key is not judging yourself so harshly on those thoughts coming in. Maybe the ones that are a little disturbing or whatever, like what, whatever they may be. So understanding that we have tens of thousands of these thoughts every day. So don't get overly attached to one particular thought because what happens then is – those thoughts that we have trigger certain feelings and emotions. Right. And as you know, you know, those feelings and emotions lead to our actions and behaviors, which then create our habits and H is for habits. Um, there's also a lot of studies and science behind habits. You know, I think the college of London says it takes 66 days to create a new habit, but I honestly say that's BS because that's a long time, like two months. I don't think it should take two months to necessarily establish a habit. You know, um, when you talk about brushing your teeth or making your bed or, you know, going to the bathroom, like these are things that become very automatic eh, eh, early on. So, so when it, when we talk about habits, Wade, it's like the formula for me is commitment times consistency, right? Like, you need to be 
unconditionally committed to your habits, right? This is your life. And we talk about unconditional love and the importance of that, right? Um, but unconditional commitment is also very important. Like how committed are you to your promises, to your vision, to that life that you want to create for yourself and your family? And um, once we're able to establish some consistency with those habits, then we start to cultivate confidence. And with that confidence, we establish momentum, right? Like we stack a couple habits, we stack a few mm -hmm. days in a row. Mm -hmm. And then with that momentum, we have consistent motivation. I think people are always searching for their next hit of, uh, uh, of motivation. Like it's Totally. Like it's a drug, right? Like it is a drug. Well, it's a dopamine hit now. It's not even, it's like a, a we kind of live this voyeuristic virtual lifestyle where if I watch Jocko Wilnick put his 4.30 a.m. thing and I feel like I'm kind of doing it myself even though I'm getting up at 10. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I think that's, I think that's a, a, perfect, a perfect way to describe it. So, so when we talk about habits, you know, again, don't try to instill four or five at one time, like really commit to one thing at a time. And I think especially as high performers, it, it, it's, it's very easy to get caught up in like trying to be as effective and productive as possible. But understand the people who try to go vegan, wake up at 5am, do CrossFit every day and do yoga every evening, like all in the same week, like those are the people that have success for a week or maybe even a month, but they're not able to sustain it because they're throwing too much at themselves. So understanding neuroscience, like how dopamine works, like drip that dopamine. Don't try and dump all of this dopamine at once, right? And then you're depleted. It's like, no, stack habits, make your bed, brush your teeth, journal, move your body. Like stacking those things is going to create such a powerful momentum in your life. Um, and then, and then R is relationships because again, with, I'm sure some of the people you were coaching out in Vancouver, you know, it's great to have all these things, but it's even greater when you can share them with your loved ones, you know, and your quality of life is really determined by your quality of relationships. And that's why I'm Absolutely. excited to be on here with you, man, is, is connecting with someone like-minded who's more experienced than I am. You know, you're, you've been in this space longer, you know, you've, you've done a lot of things you've seen more than I have. So cr surrounding yourself with people that inspire you, that lift you up, that are going to challenge you and hold you accountable. And I just encourage everyone right now, like, take inventory of who you're spending time with. Maybe you lost touch with a couple of friends or a couple of colleagues that you want to reconnect with. Um, so really embodying those qualities that you want to attract in your life, whether that's with a romantic partner or just, you know, business partner or friends. Uh, moving on to I, we have intention. And I think living with intention is, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but just everything we do, you know, whether it's eating with more intention, becoming more conscious and aware of, you know, the food on your plate, where it came from, the people and processes involved. I think when you live with more intention and you focus on that, the results will mostly take care of themselves. And I think a lot of times people get stuck on asking how they get stuck on the mechanism, like, hey, I want to do this thing, but I don't know how to do it. Well, right. it's like, we'll get super clear with what you want to create first and then start to just, again, stack some habits, stack some skills, stack some steps along the way, rather than sabotaging yourself with like this whole grandiose picture, because that can be very overwhelming um, and, and, and also prevent people from taking action. Right. Like, yeah, yep. I've I've definitely been there. That was actually one of the reasons I I I did ayahuasca. I felt called to it in 2018 was like I was doing a lot of cool things. You know, I felt like I was building. Some momentum in my life, but 
but I was also so paralyzed by the inability to take action because I had so many things I wanted to do. And I don't know if anyone can relate to this, but like, it's that ambition, but it's also the sense of overwhelm because it's like, do all these things. How am I going to get them done? It's like, yo, like patience, you have time. Let's put our focused energy and attention on one thing. Right. And make progress there. So, um, so intention, uh, really like approaching every interaction with intention. And, um, I think all of these things kind of intertwine and, and fuel each other, right? Like living in more, we're living with more intention when you're talking and we're staying present, we're staying connected. Like that's going to elevate our relationships. Right. Um, and then V is vitality. As you know, I mean, you could, you get, you can hear it in Wade's intro. You know, I thought the way I read my intro for my podcast was like enthusiastic, but you have an incredible energy and I'm sure that's what attracts a lot of people to you and the show. Um, and if you want that peak vitality, you can't be eating like crap. You, you, you can't be sitting all day, right? We have to establish habits and practices, you know, moving every so often, like right now, you know, we're recording this rather than sitting in a chair, like I'm sitting Indian style, I'm doing, you know, shin boxes, straddles, like getting my hips mobilized. So finding little opportunities throughout the day to get some sunshine, hydrate, move your body, you know, fuel yourself with those powerful med medicinal mushrooms. Um, so many, so many things, but I really like to focus on the basics when it comes to vitality. It's like, you know, food, what's fueling you? you know, movement uh, and, and really like your circadian rhythm, your sleep, your sunshine and, and, and really creating um, efficiency with like your biological clock. And then finally E is for enthusiasm. You hear it right now with, with Wade and myself, like, you know, I'm probably not aware at how much I'm talking and rambling right now and how fast I'm talking. I'm doing my best to take breaths, but a big reason why, you know, uh, I speak like this is, is really the enthusiasm and passion. Like that's what drives me, you know? And I think as more people Wade like struggle with brain health issues, you know, I, I know most people call them mental health issues. I like to call them brain health issues. You know, I think a big thing that has saved me from like when I have gone through little bouts of anxiety or depression is like, ultimately, I know I have a huge vision and I know that my vision matters and I know that my work impacts a lot of people. So on those days where maybe I don't feel great, maybe I feel a little down, I still have that North Star to keep me grounded, right? And I think that's so important for people is like Tony Robbins says it, you know, the thing that's going to really save you from dwelling on the past is having a, uh, a compelling future. Um, so I encourage people again to just like, ask yourself, you know, what do I want to create, you know, in all of these areas and, and that'll give you a little more clarity on the actions you need to take the people you need to surround yourself with. So again, enthusiasm, embodying that enthusiasm, like you do, Wade is going to really just attract all of those people, all of those opportunities that you desire, you know, without really having to work so hard. I, I, yeah, I think finding the enthusiasm in life and, and not looking to kind of achieve an outcome, but to follow a mission, whatever that mission is, I think really generates that childlike energy and enthusiasm and, and zest for life that, hey, you know what? I might not have any money. I might not have any followers. I might not have any friends. I might not have a home. I might not have a car. I might not have a career. I might not have money in my bank account, but I'm living, I'm alive. And you know what? I'm going for it. And you know, we went 10 years. We didn't even pay ourselves at, at, by optimizers, Matt and I, but because the mission meant so much to us, we didn't care. 
we like we just kept going and then eventually it all worked out and that became a world renowned brand so it wasn't like people thought we were crazy if someone asked me on a business podcast why why did you do all this like like what was your key to success and i'm like i don't know i was too stupid or too stubborn to quit we're just i was just on this is what was important to me it made a difference in my life and made a difference in other people being mindful, by the way, I love that acronym. I think it's a great way to approach life. And it's obviously uh, radiant within your own being. It comes out of you. And I love that you speak fast. And I love that you're jacked up on what you're doing and sharing with the world. I think that's great. I, I want more of it. Turn it up. Don't. You, we, we, we do not turn down the volume here at the Awesome Health Podcast. Let's go into mushrooms. I want to be mindful of your time. I know you're on a tight schedule. Talk about medicinal mushrooms and, and, and maybe microdosing. This has become a quote unquote, a thing. There's great ways to do it. There's horrible ways to do it. There is a whole cascade of me too products. Where did mushrooms come into this whole picture for you? The thrive lifestyle, what you're doing in the world and, and, and why you do it. And particularly, what do you think the benefits are for people who have considered it and maybe some of the mistakes they make. That was a whole mouthful of machine gun questions, but I know you can handle it. So uh, rock on brother. And now for a bioptimizers fixed digestion tip, supercharge your protein shake. Everyone knows protein shakes are a great way to sneak in extra protein, build more muscle, even replace meals and burn more fat. The problem is the highest quality protein typically absorbs at around 40%. One way to fix this and dramatically increase how quickly and effective your protein shake digests is to add two to three capsules of masszymes into your shake. One research study showed that pre-digested protein during a meal increased muscle growth significantly. To take advantage of this, just blend the open capsules into your shake and within 15 minutes or less, the enzymes will have begun to break down the protein into amino acids. This can make your shakes at least two to three times more potent. Some people do this and sip on their shake while lifting to provide their muscles with a steady stream of amino acids during their workout. To save 10% on masszymes, use the code SHAKE10, that's S-H-A-K-E-1-0, at masszymes.com. That's SHAKE10 at masszymes.com. Yeah, I can definitely handle that. I'm glad, I'm glad you have a community that, that is really um, passionate about what these what these medicines can do, you know, and, and and the power that they have. So, you know, just to give you a little context, I remember first uh, trying like a li- like a lion's mane, just a lion's mane powder from a local farmers market in South Florida, like three years ago. After I read about it in this uh, Chinese medicine book that I was reading, and I was like, hey, you know, they talk about how they have been using lion's mane to prevent things like dementia and Alzheimer's. Wow. Like that sounds interesting. You know, I have some older clients, my dad's a neurologist, like, let me see what this is about. And I definitely noticed after putting it in my coffee, you know, I noticed something like I couldn't really identify what it was. Um, maybe just like a little boost in awareness. Um, but then I got introduced like a year later to, this product, which for those watching can see, um, it's called the Ultimate Shrooms. It's by this, uh, it, it's just a really powerful medicinal mushroom blend. And the reason I love it so much is just because whenever something gets trendy, whether it's CBD or magnesium or whatever it is, like there's always, and you know this better than anyone, Wade, being in the supplement space, like there's always companies that, are just trying to capitalize off a trend. I call it I call it the me too marketing based on margin as opposed to mission driven companies and there's a big variance between the two. For 100 100,000%. Yeah. And you know, I, I the more I learned about mushrooms, I was like, well most of these there's so many people after I started talking about mushrooms, you know, all my friends anytime they hear something about mushrooms or see something mushrooms, they send it to me. So of course, I get curious and I look into these companies and basically most of them, you know, use mycelium, uh, which there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, however, it's 
essentially grown on brown rice substrate. So a bench, uh, you're, you're basically consuming brown rice um, and you're not really getting the powerful benefits of the beta glucans, which is really what drives your white blood cell count up. Yep. And that's why fruiting bodies are, are so beneficial. And that's why I love this mushroom product. Um, and it's 3000 milligrams per serving, which is super potent. So that um, kind of triggered me to continue getting interested in mushrooms. Um, and I'm not even sure where I heard about the concept of microdosing, but about a year and a half, I started to learn more about it and implement it in my own life. I didn't really have, like I said, a, a bad case of anxiety or depression that I was trying to heal. Um, however, I definitely did see an opportunity for me to like improve my levels of focus and creativity. Um, so you said there's a lot of bad ways to do it. And that's why I emphasize intention, right? Like, a lot of people hear about something, they're like, okay, I'm going to do it, but they don't really create a framework or they don't really do their homework, right? Like, where are you sourcing it from? You know, why, what, what do you actually hope to achieve from putting this into your body? You know, so for me, that was my reason. I wanted to increase my focus. I wanted to see if I could become more creative. I just want to see what this opened up for me, you know, like, as you know, in the health space, like sometimes you're your own guinea pig. Um, and I had clients who were struggling with other brain health issues and energy level things. And I wanted to see, hey, maybe this is a tool for them. Um, so I started working with someone in Miami and we created a blend that was basically like 0.25, milli uh, 0.25 grams, sorry, of psilocybin. And for those listening, you know, that's like less than one tenth of what would be considered like a macro dose, a hero's dose, right? So when you micro dose, you don't get any of like the, like out of body, you're not tripping, you're not, it, it, just to clear that up. Um, it's a very small dose that will heighten your senses a little bit. And, you know, if you take psilocybin by itself in a small dose, you'll probably just like notice colors a little brighter, the birds chirping a little louder, you know, things that maybe you're not in tune to, you become more conscious of. Um, with this specific blend with 0.25 milligrams of 0.25 grams, sorry, of psilocybin, 400 milligrams of lion's made 400, 400 milligrams of cordyceps, these capsules that we created, um, the cognitive enhancement was unbelievable. Um, so after taking them a couple times a week, one of my clients who is, you know, struggling with some addictive uh, addiction uh, with alcohol and other things, this was like the one hurdle we couldn't fully defeat. It was alcohol and vaping. And he had transformed his body. He had improved so much of his eating habits. And he was like, dude, if you can get me to not want alcohol and not smoke, you know, he had two young kids. Like, he's like, I'll do anything. Like, I've tried everything at this point. So we implemented microdosing. Within three months, completely, like, not even, not even that he was alcohol-free. He wasn't even craving it. He was honestly grossed out by the idea of drinking alcohol. And, Amazing. yeah, I think it's great because, again, what these plants and medicines do is, like, they elevate your awareness and consciousness. So you realize like, oh my gosh, you know, this thing isn't serving me. It's not nourishing me. And, you know, I highly recommend anyone who's really interested in learning more about psychedelics and the history of them to read Michael Pollan's book, How to Change Your Mind. Um, and they talk a lot about the neuroscience about, you know, one of the powerful things these mushrooms do is they turn off your default mode network right? And this is a part in your brain that's in between your prefrontal cortex and your amygdala. So um, it kind of, uh, it kind of disconnects these two. So you're not so attached to your thoughts, you're not so attached to your identity. And when that happens, you're able to create more connections, neurologically, and you're able to kind of operate from a more expansive context and not be so limited in your paradigm and beliefs.
So talk about maybe um, some of the do's and don'ts about if people wanted to integrate microdosing of mushrooms in their life for uh, uh, as a method of positive change or self-development or improved awareness or reforming habits or expanding consciousness. What are some of the, the kind of key elements that a person should integrate and what are some of the mistakes that people need to avoid? Yeah, great questions. I don't think people ask those questions enough, honestly. Um, yeah, most people are like, let's just go for the hero's dosage and just blow everything out the window because everything thinks more is better, especially it's kind of an American mindset. Like, if a little for bit's sure. good, a more must be better, right? But it's, it's the precise amount which really yeah. leads to the breakthroughs. Yeah, I'm actually going to be launching a microdosing course, like coaching people through this process like in the next month or two, which I'm really excited about because, you know, on TikTok, I posted a couple of videos about microdosing and they got millions of views. And I realized like, oh my gosh, people are really looking for solutions, especially, you know, after this past year we've had, you know, a couple of the don'ts, a couple of the do's, let's start with the do's, like make sure your other things are in check. So if you're eating like and not moving your body, you know, don't expect microdosing to just like heal everything and save you from all the other toxic right. things you're doing, you know? And I think people are searching for that magic pill. It doesn't exist. However, this pill can be a very valuable tool and asset, but if you're not taking care of the basics, then it's not really going to serve you in that powerful of a way. So, you know, before even doing this, like I said, I would, I would, be on medicinal mushrooms for like a month. So your body adapts to the different fungi in the ecosystem. So then I would say start small. You know, if you don't know how much to take, try, you know, a tenth of a gram, 0.1, see how that impacts you. And this is all going to be influenced too, like by your unique body. You know, if you've been on SSRIs or other medications, that's also going to probably impact how things impact you or sorry, impact the dose that you need to really feel the benefits. Um, so start small, uh, master kind of the other basics in your health, and then also just set and setting, right? Like we talked about the importance of set an intention and then setting is, mm -hmm. you know, are you going to be out in nature listening to music that's going to raise your vibration? Are you going to do it by yourself? Are you going to do it with maybe people that you know will create a good experience for you? Um, so those are things to consider. Uh, and don'ts, again, like Wade alluded to, don't just do a huge dose, you know. I think too often that's why, that's why people, I think, have negative stigmas towards these medicines i don't call them drugs because they come from the earth like i think drugs are the things that are concocted in labs these pills these pharmaceutical things i think those are drugs but these are powerful medicines and plants but they need to be treated with respect so i would say you know don't don't make that mistake of just hey i'm bored i want to have a fun time i want to enter a different dimension. Let me eat this bag of mushrooms. Like, no, you know, understand where you're getting them from. Make sure it's a good, reliable source. And, and, and again, imp, uh, integration Wade is the most important part of any, you know, even microdosing might not require so, so much of it, but like one of my clients, you know, who, another client actually who overcame addiction using microdosing as the tool. Um, he would tell me, and he tells me like when he does, when he microdoses, he feels a little more emotional, you know, he feels right. a little more vulnerable. Like yep. he'll express things that maybe he wouldn't have expressed before, which yep. I think is a great thing because so many people are just suppressing mm -hmm. all of their feelings and emotions. And that's ultimately what leads to a lot of this, uh, unrest and disease and, and depression. Um, so him and I, like, I always have my clients on a very specific protocol 
based on, you know, the work we're doing. And, and then we like check in very, very frequently, like, Hey, how are you feeling? You know, um, what are you noticing? And sometimes you might not notice like a huge difference, but know that the medicine's still working. Like it's actually creating more neural connections in your brain. And I think a lot of times people are impatient, Wade, like yeah. you probably see it again in your space. You know, they start taking one of your products, maybe the magnesium or maybe one of the other great ones. And they're like, what the hell? You know, it's been two weeks and I don't notice anything. It's like, okay, well, just kind of tune in. Maybe you just need to get a little more still and reflect and, and don't expect like people get so attached to their expectations, you know, me and myself included. And, and when I learn to kind of detach myself from the result and really mo more so focus on the processes and like the journey that you alluded to at the beginning of the show, you know, I think you're going to get better results and you're going to have more peace of mind. So did that answer your question? Yeah, I think that was really, I think that was some really good uh, stand uh, standbys to kind of start your journey into medicinal mushrooms and the possibilities. So where is all this going? Like what's, what's, what's next for Jeremy? What's developing? What's got you juiced up right now? And uh, with your whole message, your mission, you got a big following, all these kind of things where, where, where is this all leading to? I guess it would be the next question. Cause I know a lot of people are going to start following you and, and learn more, particularly about this course. I think it's going to be great. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I appreciate that. You know, I, I always am super, it's, it's an interesting question. So I recently, you know, my most recent ayahuasca journey, which was in October, 2020 at the end, you know, one of the in integration exercises was creating our 10 year vision. So I read that 10 year vision. It's like three pages long and it basically encompasses all areas of health, well, well-being, lifestyle, um, quality of life. And really, man, I just, I, I, I want to just continue doing what feels right. Like what, what I see people that where, where I'm able to make the biggest impact. And, and what I mean by that is like, I never, if you ask me, if we talk like, you know, two years ago, Hey, Jeremy, where do you see yourself two years from now? I never would have said, you know, helping people with, medicinal mushrooms and microdosing. And, you know, I wouldn't have told you I'd, I'd be like coaching executives from Spotify and Google, you know, some of these things, plant medicine, like I didn't see these things necessarily happening. You know what I mean? And, and I think that brings us to like the whole power of just kind of surrendering and like trusting your process and your journey. And, um, so what I would say is I want to continue just exploring different parts of the world. So I love Miami. I spent six years there. Now I'm back in the Bay area and been reconnecting with my parents and it's been a beautiful process. Um, so I want to continue just elevating my relationships, you know, with, in all aspects, you know, my friends, my colleagues, my family, really elevating my relationships continuing to create a life that gives me the freedom to travel and, you know, connect with people like you, wherever it is that we are in the world. Right. You know, it's, we're recording this on a Friday afternoon at noon, you know, and, and that's a blessing that we're able to do that. So want to continue doing things that put me in position to create that freedom for my family and myself and really speaking, like I want to be speaking on the biggest stages in the world. Um, I'm speaking. Uh, I'm speaking in March at the Biohacking Summit here in the Bay Area, along people like Dave Asprey and some other awesome people. So, you know, I'm super excited for that, and I just want to accelerate my speaking because there's something so unique about having that energetic connection with other people. And it's something that I've really, really missed during the pandemic. Like I, I, I posted about it, you know, a few days ago, like I just sat with myself and I was like, damn, man, like I'm, I'm lonely. You know, I'm feeling lonely. I don't like saying I am lonely because then I, I think it's attaching our identity to that thing. But I, 
it's like, you know, I'm really feeling lonely and I'm feeling like this, not just like one time, like it, it's coming up for me. Um, and it's been hard, as you know, in California to like to go out and connect with people because a lot of people are, you know, operating from fear. And, you know, I'm not to say if that's right or wrong, that's their life. Um, but it's been hard. It's been challenging. And the social connection element is something I definitely miss. So as, uh, as I move forward, you know, like you said, in this digital world, I want to make sure that I have that high level of community, in-person community and social connection. I want to continue podcasting, you know, in two years, uh, I, you didn't give me a time frame, but but I want to continue the podcast. I want to continue creating meaningful content and sharing meaningful messages with people. And and in you know two three years, I hope that psilocybin is decriminalized in a majority of the U.S., which is amazing. You know, I've put a lot of energy and investment into the psychedelic space because I really believe in it. So I'm excited to kind of see where that goes and who knows what that'll open up. So. I'm just excited for the possibilities and 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 the unknown possibilities that aren't even on my radar now, but but might manifest, you know, in 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 weird ways. There you have it: the man, the mission, the mushrooms, and the message with the microdosing. Jeremy Abramson, where can people reach you? Find you? connect with you, find out more, follow your passion, your enthusiasm, the thrive message that you put out there and, a, and, a, and just a beautiful connection of what it is to be a human. Uh, lay it on the line here for us all so uh, people can follow you and find out more. First of all, I thought I was good at like acronyms and, or sorry, alliteration. And you just hit me with like the six M's in a row. That was pretty magical. Um, there's seven. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I'd love if people checked out, uh, checked out the podcast thrive university podcast. And if you enjoy the content that you get on this show on the awesome health podcast, I'm confident you will love the message at thrive university. And you know, it's funny way it is like, I think anytime I promote other podcasts, people are like, why would you do that? Like, well, aren't you scared? People are going to like listen to that one instead of yours. And I'm like, no, you know, like not at all. And I think, you know, just talking about an abundance mindset, like there's plenty to go around and the average podcast listener listens to seven different shows. So, you know, if you're listening to this show, awesome health podcast, you got room for six more. So, Make Thrive University one of those. And, and and then on all social channels, it's Coach Jeremy 305. TikTok, uh, we're at a community of like 600,000. And, you know, Instagram and LinkedIn, you can definitely connect with me there as well. And I'd love if, I'd love if actually Wade people posted after listening to this, like posted what their biggest takeaway was from, from our conversation you know, what are you going to implement into your life, whether it's being more mindful of your thoughts, your nutrition, your intention, whatever it is, uh, and let Wade and I know, tag us on Instagram in your stories and let us know what your biggest takeaway was, but because that's going to allow us to, you know, really continue the conversation and, and build an amazing community. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day and providing us some insight, uh, some, you know, a beautiful journey into the benefits of mushrooms, how microdosing can make a difference in our lives. And I look forward to following your message and your community and sharing in this and uh, hopefully seeing you at the biohacking summit uh, coming up real soon. So, uh, yes, brother, that would be amazing. So uh, there you have it for all our listeners. Uh, Jeremy Abrahamson, Abramson. Powerful message, powerful mission. And that's what we love about the Awesome Health Podcast. That's why our listeners tune in. That's why you're listening in. But don't just listen, take action, apply that microdosing theory, try it out, experiment, discover what it's like to be a human and make sure you reach out and connect with people. That's what the Awesome Health Podcast is about. 
That's the message that Jeremy's talking about in Thrive. This is your life. Why not live it? I hope you enjoyed the show. Give us your likes, your comments, share it with your friends, and we'll see you on the next podcast. Take care. And now for a Bioptimizer's fixed digestion tip, how to get away with eating sugar. Hey, look, sugar is normally one of the worst things for you. But let's be honest. I mean, we all cheat from time to time. And here's a little trick that will ensure your body benefits from the sugar. Now, before you eat or drink anything sweet, take five to eight capsules of P3OM. The patented stream in the formula devours sugar so fast, it literally doubles in the body every 20 minutes in the presence of sugar. That doesn't mean that you can or you should eat a bunch of sugar or sit around all day doing that. But on the days that you do cheat or you go and go after one of those maybe meals that you wouldn't normally do, this ensures that you get something in your gut that eats the sugar. And it's not going to feed the bad guys or spike your blood glucose nearly as much. So to learn more about P3OM and its sugar devouring and protein digesting properties and how it can transform your gut and metabolism, go to www.bioptimizers.com. Thank you for listening to the Bioptimizer's Awesome Health Podcast. You can find more information at bioptimizers.com.